Hi you guys, today I am showing you how to do your Halloween art project. All right, so if you guys notice, this is what your finished product will be. Looks pretty weird, right? But the idea is that if you turn it to the side, you can see my pumpkin. And if you turn it to the other side, you can see my cat. So you guys are gonna be doing this. I highly suggest you watch my whole video before you get started. There are a lot of steps to this and I wanna make sure you're not stressed and you are able to complete it. So this will be really fun. And then you guys can just hang these up at home. If you wanna bring it back to hang, that's fine. Um, but I'm not sure I'll hang them up in the class. So hang these up at home for some Halloween decor. Okay, so here's what you're gonna do. What was sent home with you for this art project was just an orange and black piece of construction paper. You're going to want to start with the orange piece of paper, okay? And so here you're going to be drawing both of your pictures. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to fold it. Make sure it's hamburger style. And then you're going to go ahead and fold it like this. Make sure you try and uh, get it right in the middle. And then you can unfold it. So now we have our sections of where we're going to be drawing. Now, you can do anything Halloween themed. So let's think of some ideas that you could do. You could do a cat. You could do a witch. You could do a haunted house. You could do a pumpkin. You could do two pumpkins. You can do a cat. Um, whatever you want that's Halloween themed because that's the theme of today's art project. So on mine, I did a pumpkin and a cat. So on this one, what you're gonna do is on one side, you're gonna draw one picture and on the other, you're gonna draw the other. You can fill all the space on each side for your picture. Um, so on this one, I think I'll do a pumpkin again. So I'm just gonna draw my pumpkin. And if you want your pumpkin to have, you know, like a silly face on it, you could do that. My example previous was just a classic pumpkin, but you could make like a jack-o'-lantern. So let's say I wanted mine to have a face. I might go like this. And I'm just doing it in light pencil because I'm going to go over it in color. Okay, and then make sure I give it some teeth here. Now I know you can barely see it, but I'm going to go over it in marker. So what you want to do is first do it in pencil, and then I want you to go over it in a black marker or crayon. You want it to be very outlined. And, and it has to be either a black marker or black crayon. You're not going to do colored pencil for the outline. You want it to really stand out so that when you are with your finished product, your finished art project, you can really see the pictures on both sides. Otherwise, it'll be hard to see. So please go through and outline in a nice black. And I'm making it pretty thick so that it's easy to be seen. And then if you want to color any other spots, you can. But the background is already orange, so I'm not going to. Because my pumpkin is orange, okay? And so there's my pumpkin. Um, and then on the other side, let's see, I did a cat last time. What if I did a picture of a moon with bats flying? That would be kind of cool, right? So I'm going to draw the moon. Kind of like a half moon here. And then I'm going to draw some bats. Just thinking something Halloween themed, right? And then maybe down here, I'm going to draw, um, maybe I'll just do bats. I think I'll just do a bunch of bats. Now, I really want them to be able to be seen, so I might make them extra thick here. If you want to be very detailed and actually draw a large picture of a bat, you're more than welcome to. Maybe for Halloween, you're thinking like um, fall items. Maybe you want to do a pumpkin and some leaves or anything at all. Uh, maybe you want to just do like a pretty tree. That's fine. Okay, so there are my two pictures, and remember that it's split down the middle, okay? Okay, so after you've drawn both sides, remember it's just in black, you're going to go ahead and flip it over. Now, this part's really important. So notice that my, um, my paper is still in hamburger style, so all you're going to do is flip it over, okay? Don't do this. Don't go like that. <laughs> Not hot dog style, and you don't want to go upside down. 
So just take it like you're flipping through a book and just turn it over on its back. Now you're going to need a ruler. If you don't have a ruler at home, you can use anything at all, just as long as you have a straight edge and you want them inches apart. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing my lines. So you're going to draw from the top to the bottom and you're going to draw them all the way across. You want to make sure you do it exactly on the line so that it's even when you're finished. It should line up perfectly where your last line is the middle one. I'm going to make the middle one nice and thick because that's where I'm going to end up cutting my paper. Okay, so this is my middle. And now from there, I'm going to continue drawing out my lines until you get all the way to the end. Now we are doing it in pencil for this part so that if you mess up, you can redraw your lines because you're going to actually cut all of these pieces out. So you want them to be even. Okay, and then my last one is good. Okay, so now that I have this, notice again that this one's really thick because this is the middle. So we should have five pieces on both sides. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to label them. This is going to be labeled 1A, 2A. You can't really see, so let me try and go down a little bit. So I have 1A, 2A. Let me, let me focus it, see if it helps. 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A. And now I'm in the middle. I'm on my other picture. So now this is going to be 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B and 5B. It's very important that you label these correctly just like this. So if you need to pause the video, make sure that your finished paper looks like this. If not, erase the lines and redraw them. 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A. Here's my middle line. So now I start again with one, but I'm going to call them Bs because this is the other picture on the other side. 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B. Okay, now that you have those, we're going to cut each one out, okay? So I'm just going to cut. You want to cut right on the pencil line. Don't make any funny cuts on here. You want it right on those lines that you created, okay? So I'm going to cut each one out. Now, when I get to this one, I'm on my fifth one, I want to make sure that I keep them in its group. You don't want to mix the pictures up. Okay, so I'm on my 5A, and now I'm going to take all of those and move them to the side. Okay, that's very important. So all of my A's, luckily, you know, we labeled them, but you want your A's together and you want your B's together. Don't mix them up yet. That'll be kind of confusing, so keep them separated. And now I'm going to cut all of my bees. <clears throat> so there are all my bees. Okay. Okay, so I have my A's and my B's in separate stacks. Now I want you to go get your black piece of construction paper, and now we're going to glue on our pieces. But before you glue, you need to make sure that it comes out right. So here's how we're going to do this, okay? So you, let me scroll out a little bit. So you have your A's and your B's in separate stacks, and you have your black piece of construction paper. You want to start out with 1A. So you need to find 1A. So here's my 1A. You're going to go ahead and glue it on the side. So notice that when I flip this over, my 1A is on the bottom here. So you want the 1A down at the bottom and obviously flipped over so we can see the picture part of that piece of paper. And um, I just want the edges met up. If the orange part goes up above or down below, that's fine. But you do want it right on the edge. So I just did 1A. Now I want to find my 1B. 1B is going to go next. 
So there's my 1B. And then again, here's my 1B on the bottom. Flip it over. And now that's going to go right there. Now we're on to our 2s. So I'm going to find my 2A. And I want to make sure my 2A that I wrote on the bottom is still facing on the bottom. Flip it over so I can see the picture. And there's my 2A. Now I want to find 2B. So there's my 2B, and that's going to go next. Now I want my 3A. And then I want my 3B. And then I want my 4A. You want to make sure you stay in this pattern. 4A, then 4B. And then we're going to go 5A and then 5B, okay? Okay, so I know this looks weird. It's like we took both pictures and we split them up and now it's every other. And that's because it's gonna create the illusion of when you turn it to the side, you'll only see one picture at a time. Okay, so basically what I want you to do is just make sure they're in the right order by looking underneath. It should go 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B, 5A, 5B. If that's the order, then you can start gluing them down. So I'm going to go ahead and start gluing mine. So I'm just going to take, without moving them too much, because I want to make sure they're still in the right spot, I'm going to flip it over, put glue on it, and then put it right back where it belongs, making sure that the edges meet on the piece of paper. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through and do that to each piece. And then we're almost done. So if you want to pause the video so that you can get whatever step you're on done, that's fine. And then you can press play when you're ready for the next step. Um, I suggest using a glue stick or if you have tape, that's fine. But if you do tape, you don't want the tape to be seen. You want the tape to just be on the back of it. So I highly recommend glue. If you're going to do liquid glue, please make sure it dries first before you fold. Otherwise, it gets really wet. Um, so I do suggest a glue stick. That will be the best for this. And notice I'm just putting every single one right back in its spot so that it's still in the correct order. Almost done, just a few more. And I like the glue stick too because it dries really fast so that I can go ahead and move on to my next step, which is our final step of folding. And I'll show you how to do that because it's a little tricky. Make sure you don't glue them upside down. Okay, make sure that each picture is the right side up facing the right side. Notice I can't see any of my labeling, 1A, 1B, 1B, 1C, or I mean 2A, 2B. They're all underneath. You don't want to see the labeling part because we labeled that on the back side. You don't want to see that. And if you accidentally did, you did it in pencil, so you could just erase it. All right, so. Now that my pieces are glued, it looks super, super funny, but now we're going to fold. We're going to fold like a fan. So if you ever made a fan before, it's going back and forth and back and forth in a pattern. We're going to fold and make sure that we fold along each cut. Each of these lines are going to be cut. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it back for my first one. And I'm going to fold right along the edge of the first piece. Okay. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the same on this side. And I'm going to do this all the way through the picture. Now, each piece might be a little bit different in size as you're folding. That's fine because you're matching the edge of each cut piece. So that's fine. And it's like you're making a fan if you've ever made a fan before out of paper. 
So you're just gonna fold back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you get all the way to the end. Push down really hard and then look at that. So now if I go like this, look, you can see my pumpkin. And if you go like this, you can see my moon and my bat drawing. So there you guys go. I hope you guys have fun. And again, you don't need to bring this back to class. You can just keep it at home and hang it up. All right, you guys, hope you have fun. I will talk to you later.